Next on our list is a 2020 version of a program from Europe called Heredus, or Heredus? Heredus. I call it Heredus. If I'm wrong, somebody out there will correct me. This is the 2020 version. I am using the free version of Heredus. And let's just go on and see what happens. So I don't have a license to activate, don't want to buy. I guess I, I'm in try mode. And for clarification, I'm running the PC version, Windows version, but I'm running it on a Mac through a program called Parallels. So this is not, it is the native Windows version. It is not the Mac version. Let's see, file new. Yes, okay, so let's go with, uh, um, Redis 2020 PC Thompson test. Okay, so this is the screen I'm presented with. According to the tab, this is the family tab. And it looks like to add a person, I just need to click on this bottom. So click first person and surname. Well, we know this by now. And Frank Verling. Now, it did um, capitalize the surname. Uh, that may be an option that I can set. I suspect it is. Uh, it is not uncommon for genealogy programs to do that. I prefer not to do that, but that's just a personal preference, and, and you may be fine with that. Uh, occupation, interesting thing to put here. Um, let's see, birth event down here, and we know by now that it was 14th of June 1891. Oh, so this is interesting. 14th of June 1891 is not a valid date. So what date formats? It has a calendar tool as well. So it's expanding the date um, into the, I don't know what format this is called, but month, day, year with the comma. Um, it'd be interesting to see if there's other defaults that can be set there. Uh, again, the date uh, converter is not the same as a date entry tool. Uh, and again, we'll see how that works with partial dates. And you see a nice little uh, box here with Frank. Uh, and indicates he's unmarried, which I guess is an invitation to marry him off, uh, and that he has no children. Um, let's move on to his father, who we know now is Charles H. Uh, male, they got it, they got it, they got it. Birth was 1851. Okay, is it, gonna, oh, it accepted it. And death was April 10, 1898. And it accepted that. So let me add Charles. We'll add the mother, who is a Raymond. Long line of Raymonds in New England. And her surname is Sarah Jane. Uh, date. Uh, now this will be interesting. Uh, January 1850. Oh, it accepted it. I wonder why it didn't accept the other one. Um, let me try that other format again. So 10th of December 1912. Accepted that fine. I wonder what I did wrong the first time. All right, we will add Sarah Jane. Let's open up Charles here. Can I add a marriage? Oh, no, it accepted it. Okay, so that was harder than it needed to be, but um, I think that in Europe and in the U.S. we kind of handle dates differently, uh, so I don't know if it's more intuitive uh, in Europe uh, how we're doing the dates here, or if this is just uh, an opportunity for improvement to uh, use uh, support different date formats for entry. But um, we'll get that here. I've got them married. Doesn't look like 
there's any indication of marriage date. Let me check Sarah here and make sure. Yep, marriage event is there. I'm having a little trouble navigating um, to keep the pedigree chart the way I, I want to view it because um, it keeps zeroing in on the person I'm editing. Uh, that's not necessarily inappropriate. What if I do descendants? No, nope, that's just descendant chart ancestors. Let's see if I can add the mother from this screen and what that does. That may be more in line with my own personal uh, way of approaching this. Yeah, so it's not having any trouble accepting dates in the format. I'm comfortable typing them in. And it's even accepting partial dates. So that's a yay! A win. So there you have it. The way to enter um, basic data into Heritus 2020. Hey, I can use a European program.